Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to make a video on how to install Linux, uh, in particular Manjaro Linux, into an external hard drive. Now there's something I had a lot of trouble with, took me quite a while. Eventually I figured it out, so whenever I take a while to figure something out and eventually figure it out, I like to make videos and share it with you guys. Hopefully it'll save somebody some time, some headaches. Uh, so let's get into it. The first thing you want to do is download a the Manjaro ISO file. So you want to go to manjaro.org slash download or, or just Google it in this case, Manjaro download right here. And it'll take you to the download page. You can get the uh, XFCE. In our case, we're going to go ahead and get the KDE Plasma. This is just my preference. So whenever you get to this page, make sure you get the 64-bit version always. This is the this is what's going to be stable. So download that. Uh, it should be about three gigs big, more or less. And once you download that, we want to flash that file into a, a USB st or a USB drive or a, or a pen drive. So in order to do this, you can use either Rufus.exe or Belena Etcher. Belena Etcher works across all platforms, Mac OS, Windows, Linux, so we'll be using that today. Belena Etcher. Open that up. Make sure your USB stick is connected already. You want to hit select image and you select your Manjaro ISO file that we just downloaded. So go ahead and uh, click it. Click your, your pen drive and hit flash. Now depending on the speed of your computer, this can take anywhere from about two minutes, maybe up to 10 minutes. That's average, so just be patient, but uh, it'll get it done, so. We'll go ahead and uh, get back to you once this is finished flashing. Sorry about the resolution change. I switched over to the camera since we'll be getting in and out of the BIOS and into Linux as well, so sorry about that. Uh, a couple of thoughts during this flashing process is after this step we want to get into the BIOS or the UEFI settings of your of your computer. So you got to restart your computer and in my case you have to spam the delete key. Some people it might be the F2 key, the F4 key, uh, you, you just got to figure it out. It, try the delete key though if you don't know that's the most common one and that should get you into the UEFI settings. You'll see what I mean right now. So just hang tight. Okay, now that the, the flash has successfully completed, we want to go ahead and reboot our PC and, uh, and get, into the, get into the BIOS or the UEFI settings rather. So as we said, uh, once this goes off, we want to spam the, the delete key. In our case, the delete, delete, the delete key at least. And that should take us right into the UEFI settings, or the BIOS settings, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, we want to change a few things here first. You want to, depending on your motherboard, this may look different. This is one of the newer MSIs, but yours will probably look a lot simpler than this. But anyways, what you want to look for is uh, under the security, secure boot. And make sure your secure boot is disabled, very important. And in the boot settings, you want to make sure that your fast boot is disabled. Fast boot has to be disabled as well. And you want to go ahead and save changes and reboot. And you want to go ahead and spam the delete key again or whatever key it takes you back in. You want to get back into the back into the UEFI settings. Okay, now that we're back into the UEFI settings, we want to go ahead and uh, boot from that flash drive that we just created. So in my case, you go to save and exit and you, where it says boot override, you want to look for that hard drive or that uh, flash drive, which is this one for me. So error number one that you can run into or that I've run into is that this that we just created, it doesn't appear. It just doesn't show up. If, if you're experiencing that error or that issue, just go ahead and shut down your computer. Don't restart, shut down completely. Turn it back on, come back into the UEFI settings and you should find it there. Sometimes Windows doesn't give you a full reboot and it won't appear there. Um, another way to, to boot from here is, in my case, you, you spam F11 key instead of going, uh, the delete key when you want to go into UEFI, and it should give you a boot menu, and you can just boot right into the to the flash drive that we recreated or whatever hard drive you want to boot from. Uh, make, try to find out what it is for you if you want to go all the way into the BIOS. 
just so you get an idea, this is what the boot uh, menu looks like. You get a little window. I had to hit F11 instead of delete key and it took me to this. And you just click on the flash drive that we just created, which is this one right here. And you should get this nice Manjaro screen. You want to hit boot to Manjaro, that one right there, and hit enter. Uh, I do want to talk about an issue that I encountered here real quick. So if you're getting this error message like I was getting for the longest time, there's a couple of things you want to try. So if you downloaded a very recent version of Manjaro, what you want to do is download the stable version going directly through the Manjaro site like I showed you in the video. Now if you follow these steps just like I did, try flashing the ISO file onto a different USB and try again and that should take care of that problem. And if everything's working well, as expected, you should get this screen. Congratulations, we are in. So give it a second to boot up. This is good. L hacker looking stuff here. Makes us look very smart, very cool. Just give it a second to start up. Now during this whole process, make sure that your the hard drive that you wanna install to you want to make sure that it's it's been plugged in this whole time okay so once we get this nice welcome screen you want to hit launch installer give it a second next choose your time zone right here choose your language good and right here you select the hard drive that you want to install the Linux to so the, the issue that I was having for the longest time, I couldn't figure it out, was right here, the, my external hard drive wouldn't appear, which is this one, the uh, PSSD T7. That's my two terabyte external hard drive. It wouldn't appear here, so that, that's the issue that I was having for the longest time. That's the main issue, at least. Now, if your hard drive does appear there, you can just go ahead and follow the prompts and proceed on and install it by yourself. If you're having the same issue I was having, then you can continue to follow this guide and I'll tell you how to fix it. So what you want to do is you want to close this for now and you want to open a terminal or console with a K, that's what it's called, in Manjaro. <clears throat> and we want to get this program called Gparted. So you want to type in sudo. Um, Pac-Man, sorry, uh, hyphen capital S and G parted. Oh, I'm sorry. Pseudo Pac-Man and uh, it's S Y uh, capital S lowercase Y space G parted. There you go. Give it a second. It's going to download this application that we need. Super cool. Using Pac-Man to install things from Linux. Very fun stuff. You're going to love it. Proceed to installation. You hit Y, enter. All right. So now we should have Gparted installed. You want to close out of this and open this and type in Gparted right there. Enter. Uh, it's going to ask for a password. The default password in Manjaro is lowercase Manjaro. Manjaro. OK, so you should get this window. That this is Gparted right here, this program. So you want to go up in the top right and select this drop down and select the target hard drive that you want to install uh, Manjaro to or Linux to, which for me it's this one right here. Uh, what you want to do now is go to <clears throat> device, create partition table. Uh, here you want to type in GPT from the drop down and hit apply. Okay, now it's going to give you this right here. So the next thing you want to do is hit new, right, uh, right click here, hit new, and then go to right here where it says new size. You want to hit 512. We're going to make a new partition, 512. <clears throat> and this partition has to be a FAT32 file. And once you got that, you hit add. All right. And then hit here will be apply all operations. Yes. All right. Once that's done, you close. Okay. Once we got this done, you want to hit right click here, new. And this will be the rest of your hard drive par uh, partition. So just hit add. Okay. Apply that. 
Okay, good. So the next thing you want to do is click on this one that we made, the, the first one, FAT32. And you want to hit right click it and put manage flags. And you want to make sure that you hit the boot flag and it's gonna it should auto check mark the ESP flag as well and just hit close. Okay. Uh, once that's done, you can go ahead and close out of this. Now you can open back up the that little welcome window. It's right here, that uh, top left one, install Manjaro Linux. Hit next. Time zone, region, all that good stuff. Next. All right, now on this drop down, this should now be visible. You should now see your hard drive. Congratulations. We're almost there. Click on that one, the target one, and you want to click on manual partitioning. And you want to click on the 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 one the fat 32 one and hit edit and you want to hit uh, where it says mount point here you want to make sure it's boot EFI very important boot EFI hit OK and the other one that you made you want to right click it or click it and hit edit where it says mount point you want to hit the little the little uh, backslash and hit OK now you hit next and you fill out this information whatever you want your name to be my, mine's Luigi my favorite Super Smash character password type in whatever password you want I'll check these things next if you want to install Office Suite in my case I'll install free office why not and it should give you a summary of what you're doing if everything looks good go ahead and hit install install now cross our fingers that everything's working and beautiful Unpacking image Manjaro is now installing into our hard drive So those are a lot of the issues I was having that's how I got around it took hours and hours and hours of research, but Hopefully this is able to help you guys um, Let me see if I could just showcase a few things that we can do here real quick, but other than that you guys should be golden um, If you like this video make sure to give it a like if you have any questions drop them down in the comments I'll try my best to answer them as soon as I can um, if you're trying to do something differently than what I did um, like let's say you want to do a boot windows off the same hard drive and kind of partition it and run a windows and Linux that's kind of beyond the scope of this one video but right here there's this Ma Manjaro user guide or just type uh, windows Manjaro user guide right there and just go to drop down all the way to page Page four, what is it, <laughs> sorry. Page, this page, what is it? Oh, page 43, right here. Page 43, dual booting with Windows. You wanna follow this stuff here, this guy, kinda of play around with it. But if you're doing what I'm doing, you just wanna have it in a, a separate external hard drive, that's how you do it. And look at that, all done. You may now restart your system. Restart now. Reboot it. Once it, once the computer shuts off and turns back on, you want to make sure you're spamming your your boot key or your delete key or whatever key you know whatever, because it's always in a default to Windows. But doing it this way, you have to spam your spam your boot key, and there it is. The hard drive is now showing Manjaro on my Samsung PSSD T7 and hit enter. Uh, right here we're gonna hit on Manjaro Linux. And it should boot right into it. Turn that off, and congratulations, we're officially running Linux off of an external hard drive. So check this out. Since I'm on a uh, SSD hard drive for my laptop, you can uh, go over to your boot menu, like we said, and select your, <clears throat> your SSD as your boot device, hit enter, and look at that, 
how cool is that you can boot your operating system on the go on any pretty much any computer and there it is obviously you got to change your or disable your secure boot on whatever computer you're going to be running it on and you should be able to run your linux on any any computer obviously i got to change some resolution settings here but there you have it thanks again for watching like comment subscribe if you can and uh, y'all have a good day thanks again bye